I think it's important to recognize that the challenges for serving low-income urban households with water supply are rather different uh, from those associated with sanitation. On the water supply side, um, what we really need to think about is um, a, a rationalized tariff structure that allows us to ensure that low-income households can afford a minimum uh, quantity of safe water for, for um, domestic purposes. And I think in general, this is feasible if you can uh, muster the political will to do it, because there is relatively high demand, even among low-income households, for safe and reliable water supply services. On the sanitation side, the issues are really quite different. Um, sanitation improvements actually generate lots of externalities, meaning if I'm the first household to improve my sanitation services, um, my neighbors are the ones that benefit because I'm keeping my waste now to myself. So in that instance, we really need to be thinking about what is the proper role of government um, in subsidizing, perhaps, at least the waste management side um, of, of sanitation. And currently, in most low-income countries, responsibility for construction, financing, operation and maintenance um, all fall to the end users. And so for low-income households, um, that can be really daunting. We know that a lot of uh, low-income households in developing country cities have problems with poor quality water. And one of the approaches we've seen over the last decade or so is trying to think about technologies um, that households can use to manage their own water quality, so chlorine products, filters, etc. We call these point of use uh, approaches. And they're, they're effective when they're used correctly and consistently, but it's a pretty um, tall order to ask a low income household um, to consistently, day in and day out, use those technologies. An alternative approach that we've been thinking about is to move up one scale and think about intervening at a shared water point like a public tap or a hand pump where low income households um, differentially obtain their water. I do think that uh, improving water supply and sanitation can contribute to economic development for cities and countries as a whole. Um, by reducing exposure to fecal pathogens, you not only uh, help reduce child mortality associated uh, with those illnesses, but we're starting to understand that the health and productivity effects of exposure to fecal pathogens can um, actually include stunting and impaired cognitive development. So if you think about kind of the long-term effects of removing uh, those fecal pathogens from the environment, you could actually be talking about measurable impacts on the economy of cities and countries. I think we've learned over the past couple of decades that it's important to think carefully about ways that low-income versus high-income households use water when designing tariffs. As one example, a very common tariff structure is the increasing block tariff, where households are charged more per unit volume the more water they use. Well, if you're a low-income household, you're much more likely to share a tap with your neighbors, and that's going to push you into actually the highest unit volume charge. Um, this is not a new insight. We've, we've known about this for a while, but it's been slow um, to take root in terms of tariff reform for uh, cities of the Global South. In just the past few years, in Maputo, Mozambique, the regulatory authority um, has initiated a couple of really exciting policy reforms that I think have had a major impact on the urban poor, particularly in Maputo. Um, one of those has been the regularization or the decriminalization of the resale of water between households. So if I have a private connection but my neighbor does not, um, I'm now allowed to sell or to give that water to my neighbor without threat of uh, prosecution. Um, and this decision was based on some really good research that demonstrated that this type of service um, provides time savings. Uh, it's not um, exploitative in terms of the money, monetary costs um, and actually could represent, because of volumetric pricing right, at the utility level, um, could represent sort of a costless uh, uh, expansion of the pipe network to the urban poor.